Hello, 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 and welcome back to Alice Talks Football, and welcome back to another live Manchester United news, transfer news, takeover news, and general football chit chat show. News coming out about Manchester United starting 11 ahead of the Fulham game tomorrow. Amari Forson to play. Will he be playing centre forward and Rashford on the left, Garnacho on the right? Could he be playing on the right wing and Garnacho moves up to the left and Rashford striker? Or could he be moved, moved to the left wing where he's played in his last few academy games? He's done very, very well there. What is the latest on Amari Forson? What's the plan? What's the starting 11 ahead of tomorrow? But also, why does Ten Hag prefer this guy to Ahmad? We've got a bit of clarity about why Ten Hag is picking this guy over Ahmad and what Ten Hag sees in this guy over Ahmed Diallo. Then we're going to get into news on Rasmus Hoyland. He's injured. What games is Rasmus Hoyland going to miss this season? Breaking down the injury list and when the returns are. Molasses return date looking to be almost confirmed now. The latest amount, Juan Bissaka will tell you everything you need to know on that. But also diving into some transfer news. It looks like um, two of Manchester United's midfield targets have reportedly been approved, been approved by Ineos. So these are midfield targets that the scouts have looked at. Apparently Ineos also like um, and then the United Muppeteers also added something to that report, or they actually had their own report that was different to that report. Again, confirming that United are interested in these two midfielders. We'll get into them. Who are the targets? Why might they already be targets ahead of the summer now? Ineos have come in and players in your site. Then we'll just get into general transfer news. Could Brandon Williams be coming back to Manchester United? What is the latest on that? Casemiro exit looking more and more likely with Saudi coming in a bit of latest on Dan Ashworth transfers, takeovers and all of that. So lots and lots to get into in today's live show. It's taken me basically a minute and a half to explain just a little bit of what we're going to get into in today's live show. And also Ollie reveals why he liked McFred and continued to put McFred as well. So that is also in today's live show, what Ollie said on that. So loads to get through. So please do hit that like button. Please do subscribe to new Please do share as well. Uh, David said, I'd be very impressed if Ahmad started ideal game too, but I guess it's a good game to see Amari Forson. I think that Ahmad is better than Amari Forson. I'd play Ahmad in the centre, Garnacho on the right, Rashford on the left tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. Academy scoop was the said it's about the day before the Everton game that Cobby Maynard was going to start versus Everton. They were spot on. Academy Scoop, this information has come from Academy Scoop. They don't put out much, but when they do it, it's, it's, they've never been wrong. They've said that Maino was going to start versus Everton. Maino started versus Everton. They said this, they said that. And they're saying Forson's going to start tomorrow. And with Hoyland being out injured, I, they might be right with that. Academy Scoop seems to hit the nail on the head. So when they're saying Forson's going to start tomorrow, it's a bit like Romano saying Forson's going to start tomorrow. Unless something happens, they're never normally wrong as well. Um, so let's get into this as well. So, someone said Amas instead of Lindelof tomorrow. I don't think Amas will be involved. I think he is 16. There's such a difference between 16 and 18. I think Amas is great, but I think they're definitely going to mould Amas again. So what was said on Forson by Academy Scoop, they said Amari Forson is set to be handed his first Premier League start against Fulham tomorrow uh, as a result of Manchester United's ongoing injury crisis. This follows news of Rasmus Hoyland suffering a fitness setback, forcing Tenno to reconsider attacking personnel. And they said more on this. Amari is thought to be appreciated very highly by Tenno and his staff. And the preference for Forson over Ahmad is not based on training performances or effort related, but rather on skill set and potential in the eye of the coaches, which was very, very interesting there that um, they actually think that Forson has a high higher maybe skill set and potential than Amad Diallo. I think Amad Diallo in terms of technical ability beats Forson, but maybe in terms of Forson's versatility, in terms of the way Tenar wants to play, the fact that Forson is three years younger than Amad, maybe, maybe that is why they're focusing on Forson over Amad. It could also be because they want to tie Forson down to a new contract and not lose him, so they're going to give him that preference as well. It, it, it's quite interesting because I think Amad is better than Forson myself. I think Amad's got a better skill set, but I think maybe Forson could be more suited to Tenar ball in the sense of he could be more of a transition threat. Now, I did a little bit of research myself on Forson to try and get an understanding of the player and why Tenog may rate Forson higher than Ahmed Diallo. So I said Forson 19 is set to start for Man United tomorrow. And why does Tenog rate him so highly and prefer him to Ahmed? Firstly, Forson is three years younger than Ahmed. So you have to look at it like that and say, well, with Forson being three years, could he be better than Ahmed in three years, as good as Ahmed was at Sunderland? But Forson has shown he can play left wing, right wing, um, centre forward and attacking midfield throughout his time in the academy. And his versatility is something Tenog values. We know Tenog likes versatile players. I mean, Ahmed is pretty versatile, to be fair, but I think Forson can be a wide winger. He can be a central winger. He can be, he can be please centre forward, maybe. Uh, but I think why Forson might play is because I don't think Tenog will want to ruin the wing dynamics or gone after and Rashford when they're starting right so well and I think he'll be comparing Forson and Ahmed and what they can do in the central roles and I think when you're in the central role and you need to hold up the ball maybe Forson's physical build might be something that 
Tenal personally prefers in him. Obviously, Forson probably in terms of retention, in terms of hold up play, um, might be better suited to replace Hoyland because he's a bit more physical. He's one of the more physical players for 19. Um, while Forson does not have the technical skills as qualities Ahmed has, he, he does have decent skills. He can hold up the ball well, he can keep the ball well in tight spaces and lay up for teammates using his physicality to hold up defenders, which could be valuable if he's playing in that central position. But Again, another reason I think Tenog may like Forson is because he's got rapid pace and he's proven to be a good ball carrier. I know in pre-season he wasn't particularly amazing for United, but if you do watch him in the academy, he has looked very good. He's very rapid. He's very good in transition. He's very good at carrying the ball. We've seen that Garnacho ranks fourth for carries this season. Um, he's he's a very good ball carrier like Garnacho. And with Tenog wanting to play this direct transition-based football, always going direct, always transitioning, particularly now we've lost uh, Lissandra Martins and Luke Shaw and our build-up is awful again. We just keep having to go long and direct. Maybe Forson's pace and a ability to find space and behind and run into space behind might be something he sees better. Ahmad is quick, but Ahmad is as quick as force. And Ahmad is a guy that likes to cut inside and create and dominate the half spaces. Ahmad is such a technical, intelligent winger that likes to dominate the half spaces, whereas I guess force, if you want to be a more direct approach, go long. Like the way I see it is, I'm going to be honest with you guys, the way I see it and the way I'm going to break this down for you is if you want to play good possession-based Pep Guardiola football, although to be fair, Pep's gone more direct and traditional with his wingers now, but Ahmad is suited to definitely more possession-based football where you keep the ball better. But if we're just wanting to go long and be direct, maybe Forson is more suited to that. I know people don't like this long direct where Bruno does a hero ball and Rashford in behind, but that is what Rashford and Forson and Bruno is more suited to because Tenog likes that more transition-based where we keep the ball less, we have less control of the ball, but we're always direct. Whereas I think if you want to control the ball and break down teams, Ahmad and Sancho is more suited to that. But it just doesn't seem that... That is the way that Tenog maybe wants to play to an extent, in my opinion. You could disagree with that. I might not be right. But I think Forson's pace to run in behind might be why he's preferred to technical players like Ahmed Diallo. Uh, we've seen from Forson's academy days, he's very good at darting down the wing. He can go outside or in, and he has good vision to pick out pass for his teammate. I think Forson's creativity, from what I've watched of him in his academy, has been underrated. But I think what we saw about Forson, and you know, I'd rather Forson play than Anthony. My first choice to play is Ahmad. My second choice to play is Forson. My third choice to play is Anthony. I like Forson, and what I liked about Forson is when he came on versus Wolves, he made an impact. His movement dragged two defenders with him to open up room for Mania to slot in the winger. And I think Forson's off the ball movement isn't just a one off fluke in that game. His off the ball movement throughout his career has been very good in terms of his ability to manipulate defenders and create space for teammates, which is something that is unique. And maybe that's something that Tenor finds particularly valuable. Um, and I said, I think Ahmad is better than Forson, and Forson is three years younger. And as a squad player and his versatility and unique skill set might be why Tenor finds it more valuable. But interestingly, Forsen has been playing left wing these last few games. So maybe there's a plan for him to play on the left. Rashford to play central, gone actually to play on the right. Ahmad can't really play on the left. He probably could, but Ahmad is a right winger and he operates in the right half space well. Forsen is maybe more versatile. Maybe that's what Tenog sees. Um, again, not an expert, but the way I'm trying to look at it is I'm trying to think, where's Tenog coming at? Forsen, three years younger. Forsen needs to sign a new contract. Ahmad is a very good technical player, um, and I think Ahmad, in terms of ceiling, is, is very good and one of the most technically gifted players in the squad, and I'd like to see Ahmad play. But I think the Forsen is a good player, and I think with Forsen, Tenag might say this guy could be more valuable to the team in terms of his off-the-ball work, in terms of how we can make players around him better. Maybe that's why Tenag views uh, Forsen high. Now, I do want to get into the transfer news. I do want to get into the news on Hulman. I want to get into Manchester United approaching him. I do want to get into these stories in just a second as well. So please do smash the likes. Jack says, our fitness medical staff are dog shite. I agree with you, Jack. They are dog shite as well. And Forsen doing a better academy and training than Ahmad um, up to Ahmad to force his starts. Well, apparently Ahmad's been very good in, in, in training um, and his performance versus Forrest, his little cameo was good. Um, so I don't know. I think Tenog just use forces more of what he wants as well. Uh, human, human, your human, human. I, I'm very bad at saying that. It's really weird those Danish names because there's a D at the end of your. You'd think it's Hulman, but it's actually human, isn't it? it it's, it's very difficult to pronounce those Danish names. Uh, any news on Mount Molassi, one second. We're going to get into that in about five minutes. Um, and human, human. I can't, I can't say. It. I'm very bad at pronunciation. If you know me as well, I was dreading Hoyland getting injured, but hopefully next season we won't have to go. We won't have to go through this with smart recruitment. Now we have football people. Absolutely, we're going to get into the latest on injuries. We're going to get into the latest on transfers as well. I don't get ten old guy refused to let Amma go out on loan, but hasn't involved him and played a game in weeks. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm glad Amma didn't go out on loan because I, I want to see Ahmed selfishly play. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I, I'd like to see Ahmed play. But I have no I have no, no issue with Forson playing. I like Forson. I think Ahmed is better, but I like Forson. And I'd rather Forson play than Anthony. 
Um, Ahmed is like Polisu, they both are smaller, quick players, Tenor clearly likes bigger players, that's it. Potentially, potentially, yeah, and Ahmed was ridiculously good on loan, we need to give him a look, and especially as I forgot. I mean, he was so good on loan, I just, for me, if we don't give Ahmed a proper chance, I will be quite upset as well. But anyway, let's can you continue on to Yulman, Yulman, I'm trying, Yulman, whatever, whatever, however, however we're going to say his name. Okay, so it was said by the Muppeteers, first of all, that according to the Muppeteers, United are looking at Amadou Anana and Morton Hulman with Casimir and Eriksson set to leave the summer. And there was also other reports saying that sources suggest Anana and Hulman are two players um, approved by Man United scouts, which Ineos also approve. Um, so United, this isn't just come from United Muppeteers. I saw some, some, someone else say something about Hulman. It was some foreign Portuguese outlet. Um, what was it called? sports might have been record portugal i'll have to check that but firstly so firstly there was reports coming out from portugal about uh, apparently man united and Ineos coming in are also fans of yulman and um, that could be one that was approved um and anana is the other option as well and then the united muppeteers came out today and said that united looking at amadou anana and Mar Martin, Morton Hulman with Casemiro and Ericsson set to leave and then we've got Paul Hurst coming out saying that Casemiro is a target for Saudi Arabia's top four clubs this summer so that was sort of the latest on the transfer front so in terms of that I think Casemiro could leave I think Ericsson will leave I think Amrabat's going to go and I think Casemiro could go and potentially McTominay could go and potentially Mejri could go and I think if all of those players go there will be two midfield signings and that could be Anana and Yulman now, we've been linked to Anana, we've been linked to Fofana, we've been linked to Weefer, and now we've been linked to Hulman. We've not really been linked to a Suleimendi type player, which I found a little bit surprising. But in terms of Hulman, who I've not seen play loads, I'm not going to lie to you, I've watched a little bit of sporting just to keep an eye on Anasio and Diamond. Uh, but from what I've seen from Hulman, he can play as a six, as eight. He's a good ball winner. I think what he would maybe be suited to United is, is he looks good at stopping opposition transitions. He's good at picking up those loose balls, covering space, stopping opposition transitions, which is something that's particularly weak in Casemiro's game because he's not good at occupying large space and covering large amounts of ground and stopping those transitions the teams run through us. That's not really tied to Casemiro. Part of it is Ten Hag's tactics making the job a lot harder than it is. And I think this is a guy that can win the ball well. I think this is a guy that in terms of uh, possession players probably be a little bit more comfortable on the ball than Casemiro. You know, Mano's our only midfielder that's really comfortable on the ball and the rest of our midfielders aren't. Hulman, while he's not going to be like Mano on the ball, I think he's semi-comfortable on the ball. I think he's better than Amadou Anana on the ball, in my opinion. But I think he's a tempo setter. He's very comfortable in possession, very good out of possession, and he covers the ground. He's a great jewel winner and he's good at picking up those loose balls. So I can understand why United are looking at this guy. Um, if I can understand why Ineos might have reportedly approved this because there's players that United are looking at, but we've also got to go, well, will, will Ineos approve these players? And I think right now we know that Manchester United, like Elise, Neto, Branthwaite, Todibo, Lenny Euro, Tapsover, we know that they like obviously Hulman, we know they like Amadou Anana, we know they like Fafana. It's kind of being suggested that so far out of the players that Man United like, the ones that Ineos approve of are Branthwaite, Todibo, Elise, Hulman and Amadou Anana are reportedly ones that Ineos have come in and said, yeah, we like him. Obviously, Dan Ashworth isn't in yet, so things can definitely change. But from what I've seen of Hulman, I do think he could be a good addition to United as well. Um, I'm sorry but to be off topic, but I wish we signed Cara from Napoli and we let Rashford and Anthony leave. I mean, I do like uh, Kavaris Helia, um, and, I, and I would replace Anthony with Kavaris Helia, but I think he's going to be very, very expensive. And I think for me, the way I want United to approach things is rather than spending 70, 80 million on Kavaris Helia, um, I'd rather you know keep Rashford for another season because I think that if Rashford can get back in form, he can be more than good enough for us. The thing is, Anthony, even when he was in form, hasn't been good enough for United. Rashford, when in form, is good enough for United. So if Rashford can get in form and play for his best, keep Rashford, sell Anthony, sell Police Street because Ten Hag's not going to play him, and sell Sancho. And then instead of bringing in Kavaris Heller, in my opinion, who I think is fantastic, Kavaris Heller and Liao are looking in the 70, 80 million range. I think we need to look in that 50 million range at the Nico Williams, at the Nettos, at the Elise's. Or well, the problem is with Neto and Elise, their injury record, why? Which is why Nico Williams stands out for me. The Danish trio, Hulman, Eriksson, Hoyland. The Danish might as well go support Man United at this rate as well. Anana's average on the ball seems clumsy. I, I agree with that. I think that in terms of a DM, Hulman looks better on the ball than Anana. My first choice DM is actually Mats Weefer. I do want to get into more news because we've got interesting news on on Brandon Williams maybe returning. And I want someone to see asked about the latest on injuries. And I do want to get into that. But um, I sort of was trying to give my realistic, um, oh, wrong, wrong screen. I was trying to give my realistic top five signings to Man United ahead of the summer. And this is what I ended up coming up with. 
in terms of what I would do. So I obviously said here, uh, Lenny Euro, um, I, I, he was rumoured to have a 50 million euro fee, uh, but I think he'll probably be closer to 50, 60 million pounds. I think he'll be go up to about 70 million euros. And then I've gone with Anasio. And the reason I've gone with Anasio with Bramthwaite is because I love, I think Bramthwaite's brilliant, but I think with Shaw and Martinez's as injuries, Anasio is near as Martinez and could do Shaw's role. I've gone with Matt Weaver as DM so centre mid, and then I've gone with Elisa and Nico Williams, just because I think they're, I think they're Neto's very similar profile to what we have. And I think we're complaining about what we have. So I like Neto now. I would not complain if we've got Neto, but maybe Nico Williams could be more suited to, to what we need. And then I've gone with Cirque, although I am a big fan of Tell. Um, that's probably what I would do in the summer. But you're not really that interested in what I would do. You're here, you're here for the news, you're here for the information and all of that as well. Neto is class, to be fair. Neto is class. And Arno's torn physical, but I've not. I've watched not so convinced of him. I've watched Denard play some games. I'm like, I want him at United. And I've watched him play other games where I'm like, this guy's vulnerable. I'm not, Bramthwaite, I really, really like. When I've watched Everton, I've really been impressed with Bramthwaite. And Nana, I've had, there's been games where I've been really impressed with him and other games where I think, oh, at United, that could be a problem as well. Williams um, is only going to play until Malassia and Shaw's back and so in the summer, says Axeman, exactly as well. Nargisman wants to be the boss. I mean, Nargisman's a good manager as well. Uh, Garner typically outshines an arm when I watch Everton, says Alex, which is interesting there as well. Uh, continuing on, so what is the latest on the left back? And then we'll get into the latest on the injury front for Manchester United. It was said by Rich Fay that Manchester United could look to recall Brandon Williams from his loan deal at Ipswich, but this would require an agreement between both clubs as well as the special dispension from the EFL. It's understood to be a, a unlikely, but uh, grant, unlikely it would be granted even if it was explored. So it looks like um, Man United might explore to see if they can do something with recalling Brandon Williams, but there's no guarantee that that will be allowed. Uh, it was also said that there's been suggested that Tyrone Malassia will return to training on grass next week, which replies he's probably a few weeks away from injury. So there's an expectation that Tyrone Malassia will be back in late March, so after the international break, which is, you know, only a couple of weeks before Shaw's back. And even if he is back in late March, he's, you, you know, it will take a little bit longer for him to play a full 90 minutes and come right in because he's been out for so long. He needs fitness. So we'll have to keep an eye on and see if anything does happen with Brandon Williams there um, and obviously Malassia there as well be interesting to see if anything happens but I think you've, you've got to be careful I do think if Malassia had stayed fit this season Shaw's injury problems wouldn't be as bad you've got to think about it if Malassia was around he would have just started versus Luton because Tenog would have risked Shaw uh, and then Shaw maybe wouldn't have got injured and maybe Shaw would be around for this game it's it's frustrating realistically because I think had um, Malassia not been in, injured all season I think we would have managed Shaw's minutes better and I think Shaw's injury wouldn't have been made worse by us essentially overplaying him as well guys please do hit that like button if you have not already and of course subscribe down below to alice talks or if you're new and want to stay up to date with all the latest manchester united news transfer news takeover news and more the injuries seem to be getting worse and worse they do we've been really hit with injuries and, and hoyland is injured if you didn't know that it was said that rasmus hoyland has suffered a muscle injury which is expected to rule him out for two to three weeks and he could miss the following fixtures um well he'll miss for he'll miss fulham he'll miss forest and he'll likely to miss manchester city away he may be back in time for Everton and Sheffield United, but there's no guarantees. But it's confirmed he will 100% miss Fulham and Forest and will likely miss Manchester City away, which is going to be massive. If we had Martin as Shaw and Hoyland for the Man City game, I'd have at least some hope. But with Hoyland, I said this um, and I said this a month ago before they got injured again. I said Luke Shaw, Martinez, Bruno Fernandes, Hoyland and Kobe Maino are the five players in the Man United squad, but what no one can mirror what they do. No one can do what Kobe Maino does. No one can do what Bruno does. No one can do what Hoyland does. No one can do what Shaw does. And no one can do what Lissandro Martinez does. And, the, and three of those are injured. And they're the five players that you don't want to get injured. Even though Bruno, to be honest, hasn't been great lately. Um, for me, they're the players that sort of are irreplaceable right now as well. Eric Tenard won't do it, but a back three could be worth a try. We have the centre-backs available. Our wingers could work us front two potentially I mean I'm honestly I, I'm down to see something different and, and adapt but so um, I think you're right I don't think Tenog will do it what about Wan-Bissaka or Mounts well if we look at Manchester United's injury risk here Wan-Bissaka, Lissandra Martinez, Lucial, Tyro Malassia, Mason Mount, Anthony Martial and Rasmus Hoyland are injured Hoyland expected back in three weeks Martial not expected back till April Tyro Malassia expected back after the international break Luke Shaw not expected back till April Martinez expected back maybe late March but more looking like April wan Basaka expected back in about two weeks. And um, of course, um, Malassia probably, who have I said? 
Wamba Saka is expected back in two weeks. Mason Mount probably isn't expected back till just after the international break. Wamba Saka is next to return, then Hoyland, then Mount, as far as I'm aware. Mount isn't far off. Um, Malassia, we won't see too after the international break. Shaw, we won't see too after the international break. Martins, we won't see too after the international break. And Martial, we won't see too after the international break. But we could see Hoyland, Mount and, and Wamba Saka before the international break. Wamba Saka is reportedly two weeks away in terms of United and the latest on injuries as well um this is what this is what i want build a strong foundation with youngsters and academy players and make a good style of play eric tin argues time for this our fans must become support the manager yeah i think to an extent i agree i think there's frustrations and i understand frustrations with ten Hag. um sometimes the tactics and he's making the same mistakes over and over again and he can be stubborn but i think ultimately the biggest problem at united is the environment that the glazers have let have neglected the club and run it so badly for so long i'm very much in the boat and in the mindset of you know what let's just give Ten Hag some time. He's brought through Garnacho, he's brought through Mayno. You know, Martinez has been key. When he's got his players that he wants to play, we play all right. We've just been unlucky with injuries. We've just been unlucky with the year. I'd love to see what Ten Hag could do with a good structure around him, bringing in the right players, bringing in the right transfers. So I, I do actually agree with you there. I think that Ten Hag could be given time to mould in the academy players. Dan Ashworth to do his work, sensible structure, sensible stability around the club. And, and it would be quite exciting to see, most definitely as well. I don't miss Martial. He doesn't bring anything to the team anymore, says Axe Man. I mean, look, I think I miss Martial in the sense of we'd have someone to play striker. Now Hoyland's out. I don't want to see Rashford striker because I think Rashford on the left, one actually on the right is good. Let's put Forsall or Ahmad in the middle. Um, I don't want to disrupt that wing dynamic while it's working. And that's the big problem for me. Whereas at least if Martial played the wing dynamic sound to stay the same, even if Martial wasn't great. But I'm with you. Martial should have been sold. Martial should have been told two windows ago but ultimately he wasn't which you know that was just on us as well it was near and never thought that Rasmus was going to pick up a knock Hoyland's playing ridiculous amount of minutes at the moment yeah I think because of his back injury you have to be careful as well luckily it's not his back it's a muscular injury although I say lucky I feel like we've had so many muscular injuries that it's, it's just frustrating at this point but it just it I just sit here and I think when are the injuries gonna end man Robbie when will it end Robbie I don't know what whatever that thing was um we got a bit of an interesting update on Mason Greenwood coming out from the sun and I'm going to tell you this now for a fact the sun is what Mason Greenwood his dad and Mason Greenwood's PR team brief any any news that comes out in Greenwood from the sun you know has basically come directly out the mouth for Greenwood Greenwood's agent Greenwood's representatives was Greenwood's representatives will say and they said that Mason Greenwood would reject a move to Barcelona if the door was reopened for United and Greenwood believes he has a debt to pay to United fans and manager Ten Hag it was said that Mason Greenwood thinks that Manchester United is the biggest and best club in the world and if a chance emerged for him to go back he would if United offered him a second chance he'd be on the quickest flight home Eric Ten Hag is open to bringing Greenwood back into the Manchester United squad um, and obviously there was reports of Jim Ratcliffe making comments on Greenwood two days ago sort of I think the Jim Ratcliffe almost was, you didn't really comment on Greenwood and what he was going to do. It was like, it looked almost 55% towards Greenwood leaving, but 45% towards Greenwood staying. I think it was a very neutral, I'm not going to give away anything approach, but maybe hinted towards more Greenwood leaving, which is why I'm not surprised Greenwood's representatives are going to say something to the sun and something's come out. I mean, the way I see it is Greenwood's from Manchester, his friends is in Manchester, his life's in Manchester. Not many British players want to go abroad. I think Greenwood dreams of playing for Manchester United again because he's from Manchester. I'm sure that he would want to play for United next season, uh, but ultimately that's a big decision that stands to Ineos, which again, I think Rackley very much hinted. We've got bigger things to deal with at the moment. At the end of the season, we're going to assess the facts on Greenwood, the situation. They'll probably look at many things. To be honest, I don't think a decision's been made on Greenwood. I think if we don't get a winger and a striker in and we lose some players, I think he could come back. But I also think if we do do the chance of the business right and correctly, they might say, let's not take the risk on Greenwood, let's not take a risk on bringing them back in case we get outraged like John Murtagh and Richard Arnold did last time because I think Ineos coming in so quick won't want to upset fans. I think Greenwood would want to come back. Um, I think Ten Hag will want Greenwood, that's been reported. But um, I think there's a 55% chance Greenwood leaves and a 45% chance that he stays um, because nothing's been decided yet. But I think more looks towards leaving, but not there's not really anything for me to say he'll leave. It, nothing's been decided. Like I know that for a fact people put out information saying Green was staying, but people put out information saying Green was leaving. I know that United won't have that conversation till May. United United won't have that conversation till May, which is why Green was breathing stuff to the media because he's had no communication with United to understand what's going to happen to him and, and they're not going to let him go, let him know till May. That is 
sort of the situation as well. Um, but I think because he can play striker, because he can play right wing, I think there will be considerations to bring him back, with, whether people like that or not. But I think, again, it's it's a big, big risk. Um, Eric Tenog does seem keen to bring him back, and Sergio hasn't just ruled it out. It looked more like 55% out, 45% in, but again, it was never ruled out and stuff in that sense. Um, continuing into the next story, I thought this was interesting. I thought I'd just add this in. But we know that Oli has that Mook Fred obsession. And I think Matic, Pogba, Bruno was our best midfield free under Oli. And well, actually, I think Herrera and Matic, Matic when he was a bit younger with Herrera and Pogba, poor, that was banging for Oli as interim. Uh, but Oli was obviously obsessed with Mook Fred. Um, and he doesn't name Pogba here, interestingly. But Oli spoke about Mook Fred and Matic and said, I love the midfield of Fred Scott and Nemanja Matic. Proper professionals who get, give everything. You know what you're going to get. And as a manager, it's nice to know what you're going to get. It's the worst ever, thing ever when you don't know what you're going to get, if your team's going to turn up or not. And I think Mutomane and Fred, were they good enough? No. But did they work together? No. Would Does Mutomane look good when he plays uh, not alongside Fred? He looks better. Does Fred look better when he played alongside Casemiro? Yes. I think Fred and Casemiro was very good. I think Fred, didn't, Fred and Mutomane I don't think work together. I don't think they were ultimately Man United level, but they did do a good job at, at times for United. Um, and I think ten, I think even if you're not the best player we have, like Paul Pogba's miles clear of them, I think as a manager, you knew with McTominay and Fred, you're going to get guys that are going to give 100% and not give up. And I think that is basically Oli saying the reason he continued to play McFred over the likes of other players, like Donny van der Beek, Paul Pogba, is because he could trust McFred to give him 100% every week. Uh, Miss Ander, he was he was criminally not played enough most of his tenure of us. 100%, 100%. And Herrera, Matic, Paul Pogba, that midfield three, when Oli was interim manager, is the best I've seen the Man United midfield, I think, since since Sir Alex Ferguson, generally. Those, like, 10 games was the best I've seen it. And then the second best I've seen it was those 14-game run after COVID with Bruno, Matic, Pogba. That, that, that's the best I've seen it. That is the best I've seen it, 100%. Um, I think there was times last season where Casemiro, Fred, Bruno worked well, but uh, yeah, I think Herrera was generally very underrated for, for his time at Manchester United. I've always been a big and Herrera fan. So I want to get into Manchester United starting 11 ahead of the Fulham game, guys. I'm going to go and get it on my screen, uh, but I'm going to get into what I believe the starting 11 is going to be ahead of the Fulham game with current injuries. And it's going to be Anana in goal. I have a feeling he's going to go with Delo at right back and Lindelof at left back. Personally, I would play Amrabat at left back ahead of Lindelof, but I think he's going to go with Lindelof. Although Maguire, although Johnny Evans was better than Maguire, I think he's going to go with Maguire and Baran at the back. Um, although I do think with Lindelof left back, Johnny Evans might suit the dynamic more. I think it will be Casemiro here. I think it will be Kobe Mano here. And Bruno Fernandes here. I know Casemiro didn't have his best game, and I know McTominay uh, was decent when he came on, but um, I think that that is just the best midfield dynamic. Um, and then I think it will be, of course, not Anthony. I think it will be Garnacho staying on the right because he's doing well. I'm hoping Tenor realizes that the wing dynamic between Garnacho and Rashford are doing well, and I think. The reason he Forson might be playing is because he's going to play in the middle. And the reason I think this is the lineup, and the reason I think for because we've been told Forson is playing is because he's going to play in the middle. Because for me, he would bring on if we, if he was looking to move Garnacho to the left, Rashford to striker. For me, Tenog brings on Anthony over Forson. Like I know Tenog and I know he loves Anthony. So for me, if he was looking for someone to play right wing because he was moving Rashford to the middle and Garnacho to the left, he would bring on Anthony. Anthony would be playing. The fact that Forson's playing ahead of Anthony, which which he should be, but the fact that Ten Hag's put Forson ahead of Anthony is probably because Forson's physically better than Anthony and Anna to play central roles and played in that central role versus Wolves and got an assist, which is why I think this is the lineup. I think this is the lineup that we will see tomorrow versus Fulham. I personally would like to see Amrabat, and the reason I'd like to see Amrabat ahead of Lindelof, even though Amrabat's not quick enough to play left back is because then all of we can form in possession this. We could go into possession. No, I know Delo and Verts, but Amrabat can go next to Casemiro, so we're maybe less vulnerable to transitions because we've been really vulnerable to transitions. And then we can sort of, Maguire can come in at left centre-back, Varane can come in at central centre-back, 
So low can come in a right back and in possession, we could do something like this where a bit more ground is covered, which I think would be interesting to see. That's what I personally want to see, if I was going to be honest. Um, reportedly, Forson is going to play. I'd love to see Amad play. I would pick Amad over Forson because I think he's better. And what Amad did on Sunderland was absolutely brilliant. But um, ultimately, I think that the lineup will be this. But, but I think he'll play Lindelof over Amrabat, a left back. But personally, I would play Amrabat. But I think Forson's going to start centrally because I think if... I think he would play Ahmed on the. I think he play Anthony on the right over Forson if he wanted a right winger, um, because we know that he loves Anthony. But I think that will be the lineup with Lindelof coming in as well. Um, <laughs> can't believe Alice has not been booted out of the cafe yet. I'm, we, we're in the box. We're in. We're in. We're in the studio box just because it's a soundproof. Well, I hope it's soundproof because poor people out there are going to be thinking this girl she does not shut up as well. Um, why would Lindelof left back? We have. We could throw him at right back and play Delo left back. Yeah, I guess. I think just Delo's been doing so well at right back that Tenog doesn't want to move. And I'm hoping Tenog does that with Garnacho at right wing. Garnacho's been doing so good at right wing. Why move him to left wing when Rashford's been getting better at left wing and is not good at striker? Like Rashford is a left wing and not a striker. We know that. Why move Rashford to striker and then move Garnacho to left wing when they've both been doing well at left and right wing to play Forson at right wing? I think he, I think Tenog might be sticking with that. Okay, Delo's doing well at right back. Rashford. I've been getting better these last few games at left wing. Garnacho has been doing really well at right wing. Don't want to impact that the low Garnacho dynamic going on. Let's bring in someone to play centrally. Anthony can't play centrally. Forson and Ahmed can play centrally, but Ahmed is more of a deeper central player. Forson's more likely to be able to replicate what Hoyland does because of his physicality as well. I think. And Herrera was Captain Mercurial, so tenacious and bled for the club. Shame how we treat him in the end. Yeah, I loved and and Herrera as well. The left back position pains my eyes. I agree. I agree. Uh, McTominay doesn't start as a nine, then uh, managers another team. To be honest, if someone said to me, "Who would you rather? What would you rather see? McTominay, Rashford, Garnacho front three, or or Anthony Garnacho, Rashford front three? I'd say McTominay. If, for me, I'd play McTominay as a nine. I, I would uh, overplaying. I'd rather Rashford play on the left, Garnacho play on the right, and it's just the nine position, the Hoyland position we change. And for me, McTominay, Ahmed, and Forster are my three options for that. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. My back is killing in this seat. I can't lie to you as well. Uh, I can't lie to you as well. Guys, please do hit the like button if you have not already. And of course, subscribe down below if you're new. I go live every single evening on the channel um, to discuss all the latest news, discuss it with you guys. I do 10 minute videos in the morning. I do sort of 40 minute long live streams in the evening discussing all the United news. Um, I wanted to get into an interesting story that's come out here. Um, and this is another manager apparently wanting the Manchester United job. And that is that Julian Nagelsmann is interested in the Manchester United job. Now, I do like Nagelsmann. I'm actually a big fan of Nagelsmann. I know things didn't completely go his way at Bayern Munich. But um, to be honest, I've always been a big fan of Nagelsmann in the way that he plays football. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. M Mourinho wants the United job. That came out last week. Two days ago, it came out that Tuchel wants the United job. And apparently, Nagelsmann wants the United job. I think a lot of managers will want the United job. Man United is the biggest club in the world. And I think a lot of people maybe were put off managing United because of working with the Glazers, but we are the biggest club in the world and people are seeing, OK, they're bringing Omar Barada and they're bringing Dan Ashworth in. As a manager, they're finally changing the environment of United. The reason Klopp and Pep rejected Manchester United is because they did not want to work in that Manchester United toxicity environment. They did not want to do that. So I think managers are now looking at Manchester United and saying, oh, you know what, they're changing the environment, it's less toxic. This is an opportunity to go to the biggest club in the world where it finally looks like I'm going to have a good structure around me to support me. And I think lots and lots of managers apparently now are interested in the United job and are putting that out there because they know that Ineos will be assessing Tanakh. Now, we've reportedly Ineos like Graham Potter, reportedly Ineos like Deserve, and reportedly Ineos like Ruben Anorin, the sporting Lisbon manager. It would be interesting to see. I do think Jim Ratcliffe's comments in recent interviews suggest that Ineos's priority is changing the environment before they're assessing the manager. I think right now Tanakh is almost at an audition. I think what happens between now and the end of the season could massively determine Tenog's future. And, you know, Hoyland being out, Luke Shaw being out, Martin is being out. That's probably putting Tenog in a bit of fear there. Uh, but then I think Ineos will understand there's been injuries. I think what happens between now and the end of the season is almost Tenog's addition. Uh, but I think there's a possibility there could be a manager change. And I think a lot of managers are just saying, you know what, let me make this clear. Let me put this out there that, you know, I would take the United job. I want the United job. I ultimately want just them to back Tenog and, and see how he does. At the end of the day, if Ineos decide to remove Tenog and that's a decision of Dan Ashworth and Omar Barada, who are top footballing people, then, you know, I'm not going to complain because these are the top footballing people coming in that have made that decision and they've got a way that they want to play. 
Uh, but personally, I just wouldn't be very happy if Tenor was removed, just because I would like to see managers given time. You can't sack a manager every two years. And I think there's so much that needs to be changed that if we change the manager, we could, we, are we changing too much at once? Should we just give Ten Hag one more season? But there's no doubt in my mind a lot of top managers will be looking and wanting this United job. Abaro is technical, tall and physical, loud, baffling. He wasn't kept in the team. I still can't get over how Abaro Fernandez went. Only 89 likes, guys. Big up everybody in the chat as well. Um, and Akita Football's not a Liverpool channel. Akita Football does Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham, Newcastle, Aston Villa, Chelsea. Don't really do Man City and because they're boring, but we'll do a bit of Man City there as well. Nagelsmann, tactical monster. I don't know if our players have the IQ to play under Nagelsmann. We need a lot of players in as well. Um, I like Nagelsmann. He's a better manager than Tuchel. I think I think Bayern, if they'd have kept with Nagelsmann, would have been better off as well. Um, yeah. Someone said, why would Julian want to only become German manager five minutes ago? Because we're Manchester United. Maybe I'm arrogant, but because we're Manchester United as well. Probably with Tenor can't play Ajax football. I agree. I want to see what Tenog does at Man United, given more time under working under a proper structure. Because what he did in his first season, getting third in the FA Cup, what he's done at Ajax is to me there's a good manager there, and loads of good managers have failed at United. And maybe the problem isn't the manager, maybe the problem is Manchester United setting themselves up for setting. You know, the way we set up means managers fail. So the way we set up means a lot of players fail at Manchester United. I think United seems to be the consistent problem. Those are players go to United and fail. Those are managers go to United and fail. And then they'll go elsewhere and be successful. Maybe it's the environment of United, their lack of preparation, the lack of long term planning that suggests, OK, actually, the problem here is looking more like the problem here is Manchester United. You, you, I don't know if I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You might think I'm chatting shit and you can you can tell me if you think I'm chatting absolute rubbish. But I think that's what Jim Ratcliffe was saying. And that's why I like the Ratcliffe interview, because he suggested that as well. Uh, Laurie Whitwell has said that Amari Forson is in the frame to start tomorrow and it could be a flunk free of Rashford, Forson and Garnacho. Another source is coming out confirming this Forson story. Ben Jacobs has just come out and said that Rafael Varane is a top target for Saudi Arabia this summer with Al Litihad and Al Nassar both working in office for Varane. Um, so, yeah, lots of clubs interested in Varane as well. And Tenog is known to be a big fan of Forson and Man United really want him to put pen down to paper on a contract is all news coming out. I've actually got a video tomorrow, which is me predicting what United starting 11 is going to look like next season based off the players that we know that Ineos like, Ineos don't like, that the scouts like have picked out the players that 10 are rates as well. So make sure you subscribe because I think tomorrow's video, which is it's, it's going to come out at like 6 a.m. really early. So um, people have a lot of time to watch it before the match. But that will be out very early morning for you to turn on. So do subscribe for that as well. Do you think Harry Amas could make the bench? Maybe make the bench. Um, but I think, I think if Harry Amas was a year older, I'd be confident of it. But I think he he's just come in. I think he might be viewed as a little too, well, young. I just realised that Akita is Alice spelled backwards. I couldn't think of a name for my second channel because I lacked the creativity. So I thought I'd just put the name backwards, football, because I, I feel like I've got Alice talk so it could be Alice football again as well. Would you sell Maguire first or Varane first? I'd sell Maguire first. Do you know what? I saw something today. And I think people act like Varane's more injury prone than he is. Like, Varan will get injured, that's a guarantee, but Varan is not as injury prone as I think it's made out. And I would sell Maguire before Varan because one, Varan's a better player, and two, Varan's been more available than Maguire this season. This is the game's miss of Man United players through injury this season. Malassi obviously ranks first at 35, Ahmad ranks second at 27, Mount and Martin has missed loads, Maino and Casemiro have missed loads, Shaw's missed loads, Martial's missed loads, Mohamed Saka's missed a lot, and Mohamed Saka's not normally an injury prone player. Um, Hoyland and Lindelof have missed a few, um, and so is Ericsson. But Maguire's missed six, Varane's missed five. Like, for me, Varane is better than Maguire. And to be honest, um, I, I'd keep Varane over Maguire, even though he's on ridiculous wages. I would sell Maguire and Lindelof. I'd keep Varane. Um, I'd promote Cambuala, and then I would sign two centre-backs. For me, Varane, Martinez, someone maybe like Lenny Euro coming in as a Varane understudy, and then maybe Inacio. The thing is, I think Branthwaite is more what we need if, if Martinez is guaranteed to stay fit, then I would sign Jared Bramthwaite because he's a physical box defender and I think he would complement Martin as well. But if Martinez is going to be injured next season, you might as well get a Nasio who's like Nathan Ake that can mirror the Martinez role but could play left back to cover Shaw's injuries. Uh, but I, yeah, I personally would keep around. I think that his injury record is a lot better as well. I don't want De Jong. He said no to us two times. I love Frankie De Jong, but I think we need an actual physical six ball winner. 
um because Maino's come through now and I think that young Maino Bruno it can work but I, I I think you need a bit more of a physical presence to make it work and as much as I love De Jong and I wouldn't say no to De Jong I think the fact that he's rejected us twice and I think we're in a position where we need a bit more physical long-term Casemiro placement if Varane agrees reduce terms bring in Tolibay for everyone Varane plays less Tolibay takes time to adapt 100% 100%. Lenny Euro, Tolibo, Antonio Silva, Diomond. I'm, I'm a big fan of all of them. Big fan of all of those centre backs. I'm a big fan of most of the centre backs we've been linked to. We've been linked to some Bolgana centre backs that I want to do some research on, but a lot of people um, who watch Bolgana be like, yeah, Alice, this guy's a baller. Yeah, Alice, this guy's really good. So, you know, some of the players we've been linked to are reportedly quite good. But listen, people, please do hit the likes and, of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Big video coming out at like 6 a.m. tomorrow. Big, big video as well. Obviously been a bit of an injury at the moment at United, but hopefully, you know, for me, it's not because of the injuries. Hoyle and Martin and Shaw being so key. It's not going to be about the performance versus Fulham. It could be the worst game ever, but if we can drag out a 1-0 win, I'm absolutely going to take it. I'm absolutely going to take it. But listen, please do smash the likes. Please do subscribe down below if you're new. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.